just 25 years, the business landscape in hip-hop has become treacherous, and especially treacherous for up-and-coming artists. D12 was formed as an all-star group on the Detroit scene. Its members included Eminem, Bizarre, Caniva, Swift, Proof, Con Artist, and the late Bugs, who was shot to death in a fight in Detroit's Belle Isle Park. In the late 1990s, D12's members, frustrated by their inability to break into the game, went their separate ways. Eminem was in Detroit by itself. Then he met Race. All the beginning stages of Eminem's career, he was with Royce. As potentially the two best unsigned MCs in Detroit, Eminem and Royce the Five Nine joined forces. You know, he said this is his last time uh, trying to shop a deal. If this doesn't work, then I'm gonna quit rap. I'm gonna quit rapping. Period. And his first time was L.A. and he never came home. Eminem signed with Dr. Dre's Aftermath Records and wanted to bring Royce with him. Slim played Dre one of my demos and Dre liked it. So I went out to Cali. I started working like on, on the Chronic album, helping them out or whatever. I wrote a couple songs. One of the songs made the album. It was called The Message featuring Mary J. Blige. Royce was progressing with Eminem in the Dr. Dre camp. But suddenly things got complicated. My manager Kino was quoted in the vibe as saying, I've seen... Eminem sit Dre down like a pupil or something to that nature. They're one and here comes seven miles. Dre read it or heard about it and, and got pissed. He let me know he was upset. He, he, he let me know it wasn't no problem with me. You know, he just upset at my manager for what he said. Understandably, a young artist looking to get in the game might feel just a little pressure when Dr. Dre says he has a problem with that artist's manager. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. That's my nigga. I'm a loyal nigga. So fuck them. Fuck everybody. It's not about money with me no more, man. Like, that's my motherfucking dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, he ain't my manager. He my man. M had his back 100%. He loved Royce. He loved him to death. Royce was Eminem's hype-up man. And nobody could take that job from him. D12 was just M's boy. Who wouldn't even thought about Royce the 5'9 was the first priority to come out. Royce was in the driver's seat. Eager to establish himself as an MC. Royce was having a difficult time working himself into the protege system under Eminem. Instead of waiting for Eminem to put out Royce's record, Royce, based on his relationship with Eminem and solid appearances on Eminem's Slim Shady LP, signed a deal at Tommy Boy Records. M took t steps to put us on, so that respect and that love will always be there. But we're our own men. You know, we eat off our own plate. We're not, we're not on the Eminem plate. We're not eating off the Eminem plate or the Dr. Dre plate or the Interscope plate. We eat off our own plate. M asked me, say, yo, Royce, could you finish this tour out with me? You know what I'm saying? I'll need you to finish this tour out with me, dude. And that'd be cool. Royce is like, well, no, man, I got to start my, my record. Tommy Boy just signed me, said and such. He totally flipped the script. Left without a hype man, Eminem reached out to his childhood friend, Proof, with whom he had a falling out. Him and Proof made up, you know what I'm saying, because they was best friends. No reason why they should be beefed out. He asked Proof, could he rotate with Royce? So Royce said, um, well, just let Proof do it. I got to get in the studio and uh, do my album. M was like, damn. I just got you a million dollar deal, basically co-signed for you. You can't even finish this tour out. Although Royce denied that he rejected Eminem's offer, Proof quickly became Eminem's permanent hype man. So once he started to fade away from Eminem, Eminem concentrated more on D12. So actually, I would like to thank Royce for getting D12 back together. Without the support of Eminem and Dr. Dre, Royce begged the question of whether he left the nest too soon. I'll never forget one day, he, he was salty. He came in the studio, and he wanted, to, he wanted to record Rock City over with him. And M was like, yo, I got, I got this D12 deadline. You know, I'm gonna give it you another day. And Royce couldn't understand that. He was like, what? 
I'm Royce, man. What you doing? Royce began to believe that D12 was souring his relationship with Eminem. We all, in fact, embrace right. Royce on the fact of M embrace Royce. You being dope is dope for me because you around my mans. That make you another dope nigga in our you clique. That was, I told I told about everybody he got the most potential. When they went on tour, they did a Green Lantern mixtape. I submitted them a freestyle verse. For some reason, they listened to the verse and felt like I was dissing. Even M. He comes on before his record even started and says, Fuck anger management. I need somebody to manage my anger. And he took that as I was saying, fuck the anger management tour. If you cool with him, why would you put something in there and make the man even think that it's a diss? He said, fuck anger management. Anger management is the name of Eminem's tour. Bottom line. They took my shit off. And it got back to me through somebody else. And I'm thinking, why would M think I would do something like that to him, of all people? M was supposed to be upset. He said, he's not talk I'm not talking to Royce, period. I'm calling around frantically. What's, what's wrong with M? What's the problem? Like, we can, we can solve it in one talk. Eminem didn't want to talk to him because you know why? It's two words. And not subliminal. Fuck anger management. Paul said, I'm trying to get him to talk to you, not Royce. What the fuck you mean you're trying to get him to talk to me? Royce would see our, our manager in the club and say, man, I don't think them niggas ready. They ain't yeah, ready to come right. out yet. Like, you ain't, nigga, you ain't ready. You? Nigga, tell them we ain't ready. Ain't then, ready then we confront him. He said, no, nah, man, I ain't say that. I, he don't eat. I, I didn't play you out of position. It was hard to play out of position because I didn't play you out of position. None of these will play you out of position. You played yourself out of position. With ego, your ego play you out of position. For you, it's my time to shine. I'm about to get it. I'm about to go. Let's go. Fuck it. How it took me to get here. I don't care who helped me get here. I'm about to go. That monster, whoever that monster was, is what destroyed you. Then you blame us. Don't blame us. Although Royce had recorded many songs, Tommy Boy refused to release Royce's Rock City album. I think it was because Dre, Dre wasn't involved as much as they thought he should be. M wasn't involved as much as he should be. And then, you know, we parted ways. Finally, Royce released his Rock City album on independent distributor Koch Records. Though The Source magazine called Royce the complete MC, Koch Records' distribution machine lacked the power and reach of any of his former labels. In an unrelated internet interview, Royce, amidst his anger and confusion, lashed out. Who would you say is uh, ruining rap right now? Like, who do you think's black? Or who would you want to start a beef with anytime soon? Uh, D12. D12? He said D12. And I said D12. They garbage. The worst fucking rap group ever. Huh? Shit. It's the truth. That's how I feel. You know what I'm saying? Even when I'm not mad, I feel like they're garbage. Damn, this is Royce. It was his voice. There was no doubt it was Royce. So he's like, all right, you know what, man? Enough is enough. We ain't Royce, motherfucker. We don't speak in vain. We don't act like we street. We don't not say names. We don't ask them to walk us in the door to get a deal and then turn our back on him when he need his boys for real. real. That's neither here nor there, dog. His first video was shot up in NY, y'all. Is this nigga the king of Detroit and the king of getting his ass whipped and left by his boy? That's Ryan Montgomery thinking out loud with rhinestones in his do-rag. You tough, dog. So I went to the radio the next day. From the moment I walked in the door, uh -huh. it's always been envy towards Royce. Asking him, what is he doing uh -huh. here? What you helping him for? <laughs> and it just hit the fan. They finally decided to pick their balls up and eyes on. Next day, my man got on the radio and was talking shit, running his mouth, said he had smacked my ugly wife. Smack your ugly wife. <laughs> Said he is smack Swift. Swifty, I'll slap you. He is smack smack deny. Deny. Deny, deny, I'll slap. Smack me, he did it. He, he said, said he smacked everybody. Did. Royce dug up and dusted off a three-year-old never-released diss he had written about D12s. He guitar. had diss songs on us. He got like 15. Like what? Right. In the vault. While we were still giving each other plays and shit, like, what up, though, man? Yeah, this is and that. He had this songs already on it. No, nigga, how can I relate to a group with four dudes that's easily replaced? Uh, I erase uh, uh, niggas when they talk backwards. What? I call Paul and have him write you off on his taxes. Uh, I'm a solo artist. You just wanted a crew. Fans coming up to y'all like, which one is you? You the fat. What makes a great diss track is um, you saying anything about the person that the world can relate to. It's like me calling Bizarre fat, saying you got a shower cap. I mean, the whole world knows he's fat. He wears a fucking shower cap. Share for the rap. Arresting the big fat bear that got to jump in the character to the rap. Niggas, give me this mic. You ain't doing it right. You call yourself an idiot. I'm just proving you right. It must have ruffled their feathers. They got all upset. What D12 claimed offended them more than Royce's disses was a line mentioning late D12 member Bugs, suggesting that if Bizarre wants beef, he 
could meet up with bugs. I don't give a fuck, nigga. You can beat up with gloves. And if uh. you want beat, fuck it. You can meet up with bugs. You think the Bugs line took it to the next level? Hell yeah! If, That's nigga, we, Bugs... <laughs> are we, yo, man, please, man. Dude. Next no. question. He said Bugs naming the song. He shouldn't even be worried about us. He should be worried about He's Bugs, family. people. After premiering the record, Royce announced on the radio he would be at a Detroit club called Lush that night. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to the Lush tonight. So whoever thanks the... Whoever decided to get cute... Come see me the Deny! No, deny! That ain't just D12, that's no, anybody in the no. city. No, deny! Alright? Deny! Deny talking tough, he gonna beat people up with one arm. Dog. Deny, deny. Trey Little is in the house! Deny, I will give I'm you the business, the dog. Build it! Deny! deny. Uh, Trey, hey, Trey, we, we thought it was one of the radio disc jockeys, the female we radio disc jockeys. Deny! deny. So I'm thinking, I'm I'm in thinking the she will be like, like you my man, and I'm I ain't gonna suck you right now because your man is sober. I'm sober as a butt. That means whoever fight me gonna feel like they fight Roy Jones. He said he's bossing like Roy Jones. We was there in five minutes. Everybody was there. Eminem was there. We showed up. He wasn't there. Some of his people was there. That night I get a call. D12 just jumped your friend. One of my one of my niggas. D12 just jumped him at the club that I was on my way to. So what would happen that night? One of his soldiers got smashed the fuck up, right? And his shoes is on this block right now somewhere, I think. Somebody yeah, wearing yeah, them. Yeah. Somebody wearing them. Yeah. Sure, you know what? Yeah. We got blood on it's like 30 niggas, and they jump on one person. You know what I'm saying? He get up and drive home. <laughs> then he goes to the hospital. And that's how Malcolm X came along. Royce 5-9 would like to apologize to the family of my homeboy, Bugs, for letting that line leak out the radio. It's a long story how it happened. D12, dawg, y'all better quit acting like that with my man, too, like I was trying to disrespect him or something. I was trying to disrespect y'all, because that's what I'm doing from here on in. <laughs> yeah, it's only one problem. Although he apologized for Bugs, Royce's Malcolm X up the ante. Line, nigga. Nobody believes you. What rap crew I gotta snatch up out the game? Yeah, Who must I smack for saying my name? Yeah. Somebody don't die, it's probably you. You couldn't fit Bazaar's body in my shoes. He went after proof. You better hope you and the white boy keep in touch and be a good little hype man or your lease is up. Since Slim Sign 50, I don't see your teeth this much. It's good, cause you got a grill like a fucking truck. Damn. Bizarre. Oh. Nigga, you can run the hot. I'll be on your porch with a cheeseburger trying to lure you outside. Cause he's in it. Bizarre, say, j j j j j j g you net. I bet you throw some extra G's in it. Just like a stuttering fool. Con artist, aka Denon Porter and Swift. Shannon and Swifty, please give it a year. Both of y'all be raking 50 sleeves. Caniva. That other nigga y'all got in your group, I don't even know his name, but he can shovel my snow. You. And Eminem. I just wish Eminem would stop telling everybody he ain't speaking to me. Like I'm one of his hoes or something. How about this? I ain't speaking to you. Chump, and I'ma keep picking on your weak ass crew. He don't even know my name, but I can shovel his snow. He told me at a club where he was scared that Swift was gonna come and smack him. But he told me to come to his crib and come play Madden. Come, come, come down the street and play Madden with me and come kick it with me. See how real I am. Uh, He's a whole ass nigga, dog, for real. <laughs> That's a bitch. You gonna invite a nigga you don't even know to your crib and play Madden? Uh, uh, he started dressing Eminem. Eminem totally ignored the whole situation. He was like, oh, that's fucked up. But he had, he had so much love for Royce that he, he didn't even get involved. I mean, he got involved, like, you know, I ain't talking to him, but he didn't get involved in it lyrically. On a Green Lantern mixtape, Eminem almost joined the battle. Okay. Rhinestones are so nice, they shine so bright, especially at night after a hit of ecstasy. Is that right? Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Making matters worse, Royce even threatened to sign with Murder Inc. Records. Eminem and D12's adversary in another beef. Paul better call me like he called Benzino. Matter of fact, I might even do a song with Ray. Sign a Murder Inc. and hit you with a song of day. We got beat beat Royce, Murder Inc. He said he was signed to Murder Inc. Murder Inc. don't even want to sign. Because Royce and D12 were both in Detroit, the proximity created an atmosphere of potential violence. Y'all really want to play? We right under your nose. Royce the Five Nine is a whole ass nigga. That's number one. That's number two. Why he's a whole ass nigga? It's because the next week he saw my man Swift at the studio. He had five niggas with him and he do shit. Nothing. Come outside. You come outside. Nothing. That's after his man's got mad. Come outside. You could have popped. You come outside. What the fuck is that? He walked in the studio. I'm in the studio with my sister and her girl. 
<laughs> what are you talking about? He walked out here with six dudes, dog. With drink. With a drink. And they pissed He walked up to me like this. So what's up? I didn't shake his hand. Hell no. I said, you said you was going to smack me. You said you was going to smack my dog wife. It ain't nothing to talk. You talk about bugs. It ain't nothing to talk about. What's up? Yeah. If you come outside, you getting popped. <laughs> <laughs> Call all your niggas. <laughs> then we, we was there in five minutes and walked away. The greatest threats to either side were the artist's street reps who might not appreciate the difference between what's on record and what's in the streets. All in your neighborhood. I just take all the precautions. That's all. I do this. I wear this. I keep this. I don't just go anywhere. I don't hang out. I don't go to club. We still went to every club, still go everywhere we want to fucking go and do anything we want to do. I don't hang out where my enemies hang out for what? You know what I'm saying? I ain't looking for trouble. You know what I'm saying? So anything I do from this point on in my life will be out of self-defense. See that? Y'all niggas get through that first. Y'all niggas just be talking. From my freezing sleeve. What's me? Beef is when these rappers be believing they rhymes and the nigga like me just take out and get it. It's high. All this shit, this heated shit. Yo, look. Catch me. Look how I see it. Yo, 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 I mean, that shit for real. They stumped my man at the lunch. They stumped my man at the lunch. What the fuck do we got to talk about? It ain't nothing to talk about. If you was gonna do something to it, why you on a videotape with guns? That makes no motherfucking shit. Any real nigga gonna see that. Shots were fired at one of Royce's crew. This nigga Cash get shot the fuck up. My nigga allergic to bullets. He just didn't take his medicine that day. But listen, I got a little advice for you though. You gonna send somebody to do something? Make sure the motherfucker can aim. <laughs> and for you niggas who sending niggas who not capable of getting the job done, you gonna feel like a dumbass when you at his dumbass funeral and you gotta look at his mama. All right, that's all I got to say about that. Beef is when I get jumped by niggas and come back and kill them one by one. Beef is the reaper, patiently pacing outside of the pretty house. Today you figured out what's beef. Beef is when these Rappers be believing they rhymes And a nigga like me just take it one day at a time Beef is when you die because of your CD When I come from your blind side before you see me Beef is when I get jumped by niggas And come back and kill them one by one Beef is the reaper The hatred, jealousy, and potential violence on the streets of Detroit Are just symptoms of a greater disease throughout the hip-hop community A disease largely caused by business Since the last time we talked, I've been working, trying to stay busy. Um, I ran into a little incident where me and Proof finally seen each other, Proof from D12, and uh, we had words. This shit ain't really got on some other shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, supposed to be hits in the streets, and some people getting shot, some people get beat up and robbed. Me and Proof had actually walked away from the crowd away from where all the melee was, we walked away like person to person, and we was actually talking it out. But the police had already been called. And they patted us down and we both had our guns on us, you know what I'm saying, so we both caught gun cases. That man got a felony, I got a felony, you know what I'm saying? Me, me and Rice had talked in the jail cells. He was asking me how this happened, this happened, that happened. Proof basically was like, yo, I, I felt like you shouldn't have mentioned my name on such and such song. And I was like, okay, I felt like you shouldn't have did such and such. It was basically us getting all our thoughts out in the open. Like you said, he's becoming humble now and knows that he said a lot of wrong things that he just shouldn't have never ever said. I've said things in the past about them that I shouldn't have said, and I admit that, you know what I'm saying? It's like they've done things to me that they shouldn't have did. Where do this go? I mean, they got to hit back. What do they get it with or somebody like that? You know what I'm saying? Or do something stupid. Why can't we stop the shit? Let's stop the shit, you know what I'm saying? If I talk to Proof and I say, yo, look, we squashing this, that means I'm squashing it with anything that got to do with it. We reconcile, we reconcile. I'm not going to hold that against you. Hopefully you don't hold nothing that from this side that happened to you. your mans will get beat up or whatever. Hold it against me. You know what I'm saying? If we let it go, we let it go. It's a mutual respect. You know what I'm saying? I know they respect me. 
just because of just because of like the shit that I do lyrically, I know they respect me, and I respect them. You know what I'm saying? It's like the respect has always been there. I can respect Royce. You know what I'm saying? I will talk to him. Cause the best thing is, I would love to see your kids grow up and fight for your publishing, and I would love to see my kids grow up and fight for publishing. You know what I'm saying? That's the way I look at life.